that is spana bana spana inspiration spana get inspi inspired by a girl from the country who came to look for my girlfriend in kingstown some years ago and you know he, he just like start talking to the girl and a whole lot of love up and kiss up and a whole lot of things start going on, you know. So, um, you just get the inspiration and write the song. Fell in love on the carpet. I think it was like lying down on the carpet writing, Spana was lying down on the carpet writing some song and the girl said she loved singing and then from that it lead to like touching up and hugging mm. up and kissing up and things like that. So that is how we get the inspiration <laughs> to write the song. You know. See him. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. See him. <laughs> Killer. Not cigarette. Yeah, man. Alright. Alright. Okay. What else? Cigarette break here. Okay. Yeah. This is a quickie. Alright. 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 Just tell me who's going to talk when they're going to talk, right? And Daniel, you're back. Really, <laughs> the continuity of them call it. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right, it's Daniel, I'm ready. And I'm rolling. Wait. All right, both of This is yeah, both of Good, thank you. Yeah, um, one bit, battery. And one second, the other. Ready, Daniel. Okay. Are there some other songs you want to yeah. tell me about because you didn't finish? Yeah, other songs on this new album. Songs like In the Mood. Song like Coming Home. And you have a hell of a special um, cover version. Don't be cruel, my God. That's great. You know, there's a lot of songs on this album. I'm telling you, you're gonna marvel people. Yeah. And um, just for both of you as, mm. as a duo, as a performing duo, and in your life as well. You want to tell me a bit about that spirit of unity with the two of you? Or when you go through these things, you've been through a lot together, both separately and together. You want to just tell me a bit about the whole time coming up and now about your partnership? Well, you see, Chakademus and Pliers, Unity, right? We know that is trend uh, right now. Let's tell us something about this thing. First, check out the suppliers. We don't worry about money when it comes to performing. And, you know, because you find most groups, when, they end, when, when it comes to the, the money part of it, they have a problem. We don't have any problem when it comes to money because we love the music. And, you know, that is one of the first things Chakadimus and players get out of the way. No money problem between us. The next thing is, right now, we try our best to, to keep as close as, as possible to each other. You know, change, start, none of us feel that we are better than each other. You know, we are really, we feel that we are equal. So all them things really come out in the music. I think the suppliers can, can continue on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chaka D. Monson players will learn to um, understand each other. You know, and, you know, when there's a problem, we learn to reason it out on a, on a, on a nice, normal level, you know. And, Normally, Chakalimus and players are two, you know, godly people. We just deal with, you know, we grew up in, 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 in spiritual family and, you know, we learn to unite, you know, so we have the loving kind of spirit inside of us. We are not horrible people, you know, we deal with horrible things all the time, you know, we just try to deal with positive things. We love the Bible, we love God, you know, so. You know, we don't see nothing. Because if, 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 if we, you know, if a argument should come up on anything, you know, no one, like, we don't try to get too irritable on each other, you know, we just like 
level it off and try to reason it out and a positive way, you know. We're just positive people. And you, you're both you know? very um, involved with your families in different ways, right? Yeah. If you want to tell me a little bit about your background like that, maybe how that bears with your relationship with Shaka. Okay, well, um, I grew up with my mother and father in the country, St. Um, St. Andrew. Uh, with three sisters and eight brothers in the same family, you know. And uh, mother and father always teach us to like share and live good with each other and teach us not to fight, you know. So um, we was like, we was poor. We never really we born a rich family with no, come see no rich things, you know, and all the luxury, you know. But uh, we grow with discipline and uh, manners towards people and respect for people. So what we grow with that, so you know, it's like, you know, as a man, we still can carry that out and show that to a lot of people. Say, you know, we are really manageable people and grow with intelligent. Although we don't, we never born rich, you know. So it's like the same kind of thing now. With Chaka family, Chaka family, I know that Chaka family is, is really a spiritual family too and a positive family. So it's like, you know, we understand how to deal with, with, with problems, certain things when it problems when it come up. You know, we don't learn to get up and fight over money and fight over this and fight for that. So we can be united together in one unity, you know. Cut it. That, that's that's wonderful. That's exactly mutual respect. Yeah. Mm. Who wants you to look at me? Oh, we'll live. Chakadima some plans. God Almighty Himself know that we are peaceful people, and we try to live down a lot of things that you know. If we're driving down the road, and sometimes some. You know, you know, you and you stay on the road. They will try to disrespect you and, you know, try to say certain things. What, you know, to let you feel angry. And all we do, we just call them and talk to them <coughs> and encourage them to do a lot of good things. You know, so we are really peaceful and happy, happy people. Class says you're very generous. You're a very generous person. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people say that still. You know, and I'm really glad for you that. Because I really... Hold on. Yeah, that won't work. Mm. A lot of people say I'm generous, you know, you'd have to say. Mm. Or a says yeah, I'm generous. Yeah. Just say the oh, player says right, you're right, generous. Right, right, right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, players say I'm generous. Right, um, and it's not only players say that. A lot of people say I'm generous. And I'm really happy for that compliment. I understand that. Uh, I try to give a lot to people, you know, I mean, share things with people as well as your players, and, you know, I don't feel like I'm really better than anyone in the world. I feel like I'm equal, you know, everyone, but we are on flesh and blood, one people, you understand? It's great. If, you, if you'd like to tell me a bit about some of the rough things you may have gone through coming up to where you are now and leading up to like when you met with players and you guys got together and you don't have to go into massive detail, <laughs> don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the rough things, <coughs> excuse me, the rough things that Chakademos been through in life, I can tell you a thing, one third, I'll tell you, not even one third I can tell you, it's a little teeny weeny bit. Chakademus is coming from a very poor family. My mother, my mother used to have to um, go to the market and sell shoes. Sometimes she don't sell any shoes. Come on back, we don't have anything to eat. Not at all to eat, not to drink. In the entertaining field now, I had a lot of ups and downs. You know, I my first hit song was in 1987, I think. 86, I'm sorry, with Admiral Bailey. 
you know, and that was, I think that was one of the happiest times of my life when I see that I really get a break. In Jamaica, that a lot of people can know me that I can get to have some money that I can let my son eat some food. And that was something because it was really rough. Then, 87, 88, and, you know, I got a few hit songs coming down the line, and it wasn't that, it was rough. I'm, you know, on and off, I used to like get a show there, get a show, you know, and it wasn't that easy. It's, it's, it's really, I have to write a book about, about the, the things that I really got through, and it's really rough. And how did you all how did you all meet meet up together your version? Well, Chakadima some players are with me together still. It's like you know, I used to listen to players a lot. I used to buy him record them and play and my record record changed up my own. You know, and I realized that <coughs> players wasn't getting the justice from the producers. He was just singing on some type of rhythm, some mediocre rhythm, you know. So I said to myself, I feel like link up with players, you know, and I feel for players, really, and Chaka Demos. I feel I, myself as a, as a good DJ. What, after that again, you lick the mic? <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel myself as a, as a, as a good rapper. That's time that I know I feel players, as a, I know players as a good singer. So I said to myself, one day, my friend called me from Miami and he said to me that he want to have a show with me. And I said to him, I have a good friend of mine by the name of Flyers. I want you to keep the show with both of us. And we went to a place named Tampa in Florida. And <clears throat> Flyers performed before me and he did about eight songs on stage. Then after players on perform, I went on stage, started performing. And I had about two to three songs left to do on stage. And I called on players on stage. And we did some freestyle together. And I'm, I'm telling you, the crowd was like crazy. So after leaving stage and we went backstage you now and I was talking to Mr. Players. He was like, this thing can work. You know? <laughs> You know, and players went on to a place named Rochester in New York. And I came back here to Jamaica. I was like thinking and thinking. And after that, we went into the studio and did a song by the name of Girl Wine and went to number one for 13 weeks in London. That's our first song together. Yes, and the players can tell you more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it, you know. Well, that is it. No, that, that's very well covered. Um, now, just just for a last lick. Mm. Um, this is great. <laughs> um, what's what's up next? I know you're not fortune tellers, but <laughs> you know, in terms of. Where do you see yourselves going next? Because you've already hit it real big in England and in Europe. Where do you see yourselves going well, next um, this album in general? This album now, well, the first one did very well. First album did very well. Uh, this album now, Chakadimus and Players, we did our best. Try lyrically and melody wise and everything, trying to make it, you know, happen. Um, well, we just have to just hope and pray to God for the best. What would be you the know, best? because we're f for the best. Well, uh, I mean, like um, to hit a, a wider market for more people to hear us, buy our records, recognize us, and you know, and and get to know the work that you know that Chakadimas and Players is doing good work. You know, we want to hit America more wide and bigger and the rest of the world you know how do you think the music on this album might help you hit america bigger well um gangster 
Gangsta is one of, is, is one of them that um, we're looking at right now to help us go through pave a different road, you know, because um we're telling the youth them something that is positive and that in that song, you know. You know to take it easy because the cops will come and get you. You might end up in prison or you might lose your life. You know, people should listen to things like that, you know, if you if if if, if you are wise in your head, you should listen to things like to songs like Gangsta, you know, and you know. Like, but what I mean is like musically, mm -hmm. the way that this, the sound has kind of changed a little bit on this album, do you think that's going to help you go further? Though? All right. <clears throat> on this album, what I think will definitely help Chakalimus and Players in America especially is the, the company working hard with Chakalimus and Players. Mm, that is it too, yeah. Record company. Mm. That we decide to work extremely hard as possible. And we, are, we want the company to work with us just as how we, we, like how we want to work because we're willing to work as hard as possible to let this be one of the biggest albums in America as reggae. What about just a big album full stop? Because you were on the pop in England, you're on the top of the world in England, so you know, do you see yourself just as strictly like a reggae band or like? Reggae, it's reggae, reggae, definitely reggae. Yes, reggae friend. all the way with a different, you know, tastes are different I don't vibes, you know, I melody and <coughs> Raga, it's Praga, I say reggae, it's reggae, Chakadima some players doing reggae. Is that what you, that we know? You know, so you have a little some some type of rhythm where we 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 come like a change, but we can't change. We we, we check out the music class is reggae, definitely. Well, that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My bit is over. That was fabulous. Do a move, we are gone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. Cigarette break. Wow. Yeah. No. Alright, so um, we'll start off um, our last pliers first, how mm. you got into music. Well, um, I find myself start writing music when I was about eight, nine, writing lyrics, you know, and used to go around like, I used to have this one string guitar, I used to play, play more time and get some little vibes and write, you know. Until uh, when I was about 18, I did my first song for this guy by the name of Ronnie. You know, it's a producer, Ronnie. But he never really have the dollars to work with it, put out the song or nothing like that. He just take the song on a tape and I think he sell the tape after. Because he never really have the money to deal with it, you know. But um, I really get my name out, I really get a break. The first song I did, I did a song for um, Scorpio by the name of Bias Them Bias. And that song went up on the chart about 12. You know, and my name started Carl. Producer started asking for me to come to the studio and do songs for them. And uh, from that, I go on to George Pong. I did a song for George Pong. Which never really go. It was good. It was a good song, but it never really go anywhere, get anywhere either because some news, some guy carried some news to George Pang said that I was like saying I do song for him and him now give me no money and all kind of thing and George Pang stopped press the tune and you know what? I'm there. What? From there. From there. From there. From there. From From George Pang. To um, RJ. I did two songs for RJ. One, Murder She Wrote and True Love. You know, and then from RJ, I really get the, 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 the right break. I started making the money from the, the um, Scorpio days. You know. 
still really start making money from Scarpia time, like go far in New York and England and them places and used to could have do a little one shoe and get a little five hundred or a little thousand pounds and them thing you know. Come down the line. Yeah, you check it must really realize, you know, and if you understand, say, you really have a talent. You really know that he's, he's, he's a, a, a good DJ. Then. Start and they call him DJ. Yeah. Sorry, could we start that one again, please? Okay. Yeah. yeah. If we could start that again. And yeah. Old oh, Chakadi was really <coughs> towards me. Yeah, old oh, Chakadi was really realised. Well, I have a problem. Cut it. And, and everybody hold it down. I'm rolling. That's yes, Chakadi was realised that he had good talent. A good friend of mine by the name of Tommy. He's now living in Miami. I went to a place by the name of Papi, and I remember, <coughs> excuse me, one night. He said, I used to like just stay on the street side and like rap into friends, you know, and they always say, check on um, you just sound good, you sound good. So a party was like keeping in the area and everyone was like, yeah, go to this party and pull this mic because you, you, you're wicked, you sound good. So I went to the party and they asked the, 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 the selector. For the, for, for the mic and give me the mic. So when I hold the mic, a lot of people was at the party and thing. Ha! Ah, when I hold the mic that night, everyone was creating like excitement. Everyone was jumping up and down the place. Oh yes, you're wicked. And I just did like about half a song. And I had to put down the mic because everyone was like creating excitement. So from that night, I said to myself, why people acting like that? And I, um, I, I, I don't do anything for people here. Really. And I really realized, I said, yes, you must have talented people here. Really. I said, yes, yes, you are not going to happen with it. Cause I, I never really knew anyone, say, anyone who would say, like, um, poaching me up or something like that. They was like, it was just something natural for the people. The people just love it. It sound good and they love it. And I really realized from there, I said, had some talent. So you started to DJ on other sounds then? Sound system. Like? I leave, uh, my first song, song by the name of Roots Majestic from Papu. I was like the number one DJ for that song who used to play, not really regular, but like a few, like two, three times a week. You know, and, you know, it was like, I had, I had to start working from about nine in the night was straight back like about two, three in the morning. I would have to hold the mic and DJ, rap it for people and everyone was like, yes, it sound good. Then I leave from Bruce Majestic and I went to a song by the name of Supreme of Love. Um, you had Brigadier Jerry, um, you had a DJ. He's not here with us anymore, he's pastor. Jim Kelly, Echo Minot, Sister Nancy, understand me? And I left Suprema Flow, then I went to a song by the name of GT, that is from Jews Land near where Scarpia, Black Scarpia Studios. And I was like doing well on that song. And Jamie's heard about me. And he asked me if I could come and DJ on his song. So that was a big opportunity for me. So I really was happy to really go and King Jamie's song. And from I went and King Jamie's, Pop, and Iran, Pop, we started. Ramming a lot of dance out. Excuse me. We don't need a single. We don't need a record on the road. We just going on going out and two jammies have a name. Everyone know that jammy sound is a good sound. And you know, they want to know what the DJ is like when, when they come, they come in the dance hall, they listen and find out that the DJ is very good. So they started talking. You understand me? And you know, my first song was um, titled Increase Your Knowledge and the jam is late and the second one one scotch with that one baby from there on Chaka Um, What was it like 
on jammies those days with the other DJs because there's some stiff competition on there. Really? I can't tell you it was really stiff. Because <laughs> yeah, DJ like... In those days, Dave. In those days on jammies, it was really stiff because, you know, I couldn't afford to let the other guys outrun me because I have to really work hard to keep my my name calling, you know, because I can't afford to people say, no, I don't want to hear Chaka Dimas no more, I want to hear John Wayne, I want to hear Tom Trice, so I have to really do some really outrageous things sometimes, I have to act, act like I'm really, sometimes like I'm mad. You know, sometimes I'm like moving and people say, this guy's on the drums, but it's just the music hit me in my head and sometimes I will just look on the camera, look, look, and people like this and lyrics flying in and people say, but Chaka Dimas is not normal. <laughs> Mm -hmm. For real, you know? Yes, and, and from them, to, you know, I create a lot of style in the dance. You know, I'm, I'm Chaka Dimas, I used to like build my own stage in the dance. Use a, a few beer box, boxes and stand on the beer box just to be above the people and talk to the people. And when people get to see you now, you know, I turn dance all into stage show. I climb all in trees to let people see me. All the excitement that I do just to keep my, you know, and sometimes it's not really say I want to do it, but it just happens, just in vibes. You don't know you do it when it's done. Yeah. So, to keep people at that level of excitement, you must have some lyrics. Yeah. So let's talk about where you get your lyrical inspiration from. <sighs> well, I have to say it's just God Almighty. Oh, you get the mic in on the tree then, them time, I never no, remote I'm, mic. No, I'm a tall mic, man, the mic, tall man. From the mall tree, the near, near which part, they put all the hands on that tree. You know? mm. And when you get a chance to climb on the tree, you just climb a whole lamp on the, the limb. Yeah. Oh. Still, so. mm. Yeah, no, we do it well. Just another, another thing, let's just finish off that jammies piece by saying, other DJs who came up through Jamie's sound at that same time and who went on to big things as well. Talk a word about them. Well, um, Admiral Bailey, I respect a lot because he really worked hard for his name. Look, I remember the first night when Jamie said, Yes, Chaka, I have a new DJ on this phone. I have a new DJ on this phone. I want you to listen tonight. And I went to the dance and Admiral Bailey was like, standing behind us and no one wanted to get my build the mic and I have to take the mic from one of the DJ one of the, one of the top DJ and give him give him the mic. And when I give gave Admiral Bill the mic and he wrapped his first lyrics the place was like happy. And when he when he really see the reaction he like he was shocked and he was really shocked and he gave me back the mic and I really give give, give, give back the DJ, the mic, one of the, one of the DJ who didn't want to give him the mic. And I call him one time and I say, Admiral Bailey, you sound good youth. Keep it up. You understand me? And he went back to Jamis and told Jamis that I am the only one who really recognize him on the sound and he respect me. And well, from that, you have a DJ by the name of John Wayne. He was just a dancer DJ, he wasn't a record. Like Tontuary, he, he went to America and do in, he don't come back to Jamaica. I don't know for what reason. He might probably feel like he didn't have the stamina to stay, to stay as long as I. Hey, right away. Shabba. What about Shabba? Well, Shabba, Shabba, maximum respect. The ranks himself. You know, he is a youth where, Shabba is a youth where, God bless. And he work hard, and I know Shabba when Shabba is at work on a few sound system too. And never really was a permanent DJ for Jamis. He used to like pass through. No one never really wanted him the mic neither, because you know when you when you don't have no name, then no one wanted the mic. But he really work hard and pay him way and come through. Respect Shabba. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> that's it. I mean, I I don't have any more questions. You know, I have one. One question. Don? Could you tell Steve, both of you separately, right, how important sound system is yeah, that's to the yeah. DJ and dance hall to the DJ and the singer? 
Well, to uh, so our sound system, how important sound system is. Probably most DJ nowadays feel that you know through them, they, 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 it, it, it is more easier now for these youngsters nowadays to just go in the studio and vice a, 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 a song and they get a break. But the sound system is very important to 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 the, the dance hall music because, for instance. There's a lot of music that the dance hall, that the sound system bring for, for enough you to the dance hall. The sound system is really important. They are, they are very mm. important part. Music that the radio station can play, the yeah. dance hall will, that you know, you play it and bust it out. Okay. Let's that again. Yeah, I mean, if you want to come with your version of why dancehall and sound system is so important to Jamaican music. Well, I just the same thing with Chakadimus are saying. See? And as me I say, um, you know, some music that the, 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 the radio station cannot play, the dancehall can play, the sound system can play it and, you know, you know, they can make a big name for the artist, break out the artist, you know, bust out the artist, you know. Because sometimes the music is slack music that can't play on the radio station and people love it and like to hear it, but they can't hear it on the radio stations and the sound system can give them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just the introductions. Mm -hmm. the introductions. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So which camera? Well, to this camera. Yes. Both. Yeah. 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 Both. Yeah.
This is the original player, see? Yeah, and I'm Trachodemus. And when we reach... is peace. Every time. Nice. Okay. He showed me like the scale, the name of the fret. Is that was the word he used. If I'd play in his band, I say yeah, you know. I'd play if I tune have like twenty card changes or anything. You play it one time and I see what you do. I'd play it after. So the eyesight was 